Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're doing a follow-up of one of my most popular and one of my most swiftly demonetized videos, Nexium. Nexium, in case you aren't aware, was a cult described as an MLM selling development seminars when in actuality their disturbingly charming leader, and no, I do not mean this as a compliment, was luring and preying upon young women to become his slaves. Yes, actual slaves in, in this year, in this economy, slaves. The arguably most prominent member of Nexium was Allison Mack from Smallville, but he had a number of people beneath him luring these women in, even branding them with his initials. And it was some pretty messed up stuff. If you haven't seen my video on it, you'll probably wanna check that out before getting in today's video. And I'm not saying it won't make sense if you don't do that, but the sense of sweet, sweet, glorious justice won't be quite as divine without it. So in case you can't tell yet, here's your disclaimer warning. This video is going to be a bit dark. For those of you that have seen the Nexium video before, you guys know it's it's pretty nasty. It's not gonna be as bad as the first one, but it's still, we're gonna be talking about some stuff, okay? We're gonna be talking about some victims here and involve some sexual misdeeds, some violence, that kind of stuff. If you're not into this, if you can't handle it, this is the point for you to click off. Maybe come back at a different video. But anyway, let's take a look at what happened now that Keith Rainier has been served some form of justice. His sentencing happened just a couple days ago as I'm recording this video, and uh, let's see what happened. There are quite a few tidbits of information that came out during the earlier investigations. One source even mentioned a pretty strange and disturbing situation where a woman vanished after encountering the group. Here's what it read. In 2003, Kristen Snyder, a 35-year-old environmental consultant, disappeared after a Nexium session in Alaska. Her body was never found, but in her truck, parked on the shore of Resurrection Bay, was a note which read, I was brainwashed and my emotional center of the brain was killed slash turned off. Please contact my parents. If you find this note, I am sorry, I didn't know I was already dead. Today, people describe Nexium therapy sessions in which they were convinced to claim that they are reincarnated Nazis or responsible for 9-11. Looking back on her experience, Natalie says, Keith finds your vulnerabilities and then he preys on them. Now, as Nexium is back in the news and its members are facing trial, these cases and questions have all been brought up again. 17 years later, there's still doubts surrounding her death. The Alaska State Police investigators believe that Snyder drove herself to Resurrection Bay so she could intentionally capsize in a kayak. An apparent suicide note was found in a spiral notebook inside the couple's Toyota Tacoma. She also wrote in the notebook, no need to search for my body. Snyder's body was never found, though she is presumed dead by suicide. Alaska State Trooper Paul Randall told the Times Union, Randall also told the outlet that Snyder had no history of psychiatric or emotional problems before joining Nexium. We heard she had been taking courses and that she changed, he said. Alaska State Police Sergeant Brandon Anderson told the Times Union that other notes written days before she vanished point to her having a sort of mental breakdown after getting involved in ESP. Before she was in Nexium, Kristen Snyder was happy, cult expert Rick Allen Ross added. She had a master's degree, she had her whole life ahead of her, but when she got caught up in the endless maze of courses, she had a meltdown. Snyder's sister, Kim Snyder, told Oxygen.com that she suspects foul play. She doesn't believe that her sister wrote the suicide note. The family has not filed any criminal report and the death has been ruled a suicide. Now, I know I touched back upon how horrible this cult was already, but I think it's important to note here now that back in 2003, Nexium seemed, at least to some people, quite harmless. Her death was ruled a suicide, and at the time, no one knew how horrific this cult actually was. Well, no one except for the people like Snyder. I wished her note, her suicide, had been investigated more at the time. Perhaps Rainier could have been arrested sooner before more people were hurt. But this also begs the question, when someone is brainwashed like this, how responsible are the Keith Rainiers of the world and the people that push them to it? Many of us know about the Michelle Carter case, I'm sure, and how she despicably pushed her boyfriend into killing himself. So I kind of wonder here if this should have been one of the many charges brought against him. There were enough charges to convict him, obviously, and we'll get into that, but I guess I'm curious what your thoughts are on this one. 
I remember reading a comment somewhere on my Heaven's Gate video that said there weren't 39 suicides in that cult, but one suicide and 38 murders, implying that the cult leader who brainwashed and pressured these people is responsible. And I really think there is some validity in that viewpoint. So I figured I'd mentioned it here and to pose the question, should Rainier have been charged in pursuit of them? On October 27th, Vanguard Keith Rainier was sentenced to 120 years after many hours of victim statements from 15 former Nexium members and victims of his abuse. Claire, if you forgot, was one of the leaders of Nexium, and she pled guilty to conspiracy to conceal and harbor illegal aliens for financial gain and fraudulent use of identification. If you want to know why, since I know these seem like some strange specific charges, again, it's covered in depth in the first video. She's done some horrible things to say the least. And personally, I think her sentence of six years is an absolute joke considering that she was kind of the leader of this whole thing. But as disappointing as it might be, I can take a little solace in the fact that Rainier will die in prison. 120 years still isn't enough time for him, but I'll take it. The New York Times wrote on October 27th that on Tuesday, Mr. Rainier, 60, was sentenced to 120 years in prison for sex trafficking and other crimes, effectively a life sentence. The judge also ordered him to pay a $1.75 million fine. The sentencing capped a remarkable downfall for a man who was once idolized by his followers, but has since been exposed as a fraudster who exploited Nexium's adherence for money, sex, and power. Judge Nicholas G. Garofis of Federal District Court in Brooklyn determined the punishment after hearing hours of wrenching testimony from 15 victims, many of whom described how Mr. Rainier had left them traumatized and brainwashed from his pseudoscientific teachings. Mr. Rainier's lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, said he would appeal the sentence. I salute the people that came in and spoke, he said. And I honestly do not envy this lawyer defending the indefensible. I kind of felt bad for him at first having to take this client on because I did kind of figure no one in the fucking world would willingly defend Mr. Rainier. However, the freaking defense the lawyer used was so offensive and blatantly untrue that apparently when Mr. Agnifilo argued that Rainier never intended to hurt any women, he was just in love and had trouble with breakups, even the judge interrupted him and yelled no. There was literally a shouting match in court between the two of them. The judge insisted that intent doesn't matter when a 45 year old sexually abuses a child said, it's an insult to the intelligence of anyone who listens. So that's a thing. The New York Times continued saying, Mr. Agnifilo did seem to acknowledge tensions with his client saying that he had refused to file a motion claiming evidence tampering by the government, even though Mr. Rainier asked him to. In recent months, Mr. Rainier was spearheading a campaign to overturn his conviction, directing his supporters to create a podcast about his case and set up a contest to find errors in his prosecution in exchange for $25,000. And that is an absolute joke and an insult to the justice system. Offering 25 grand to the general public to try and find some loophole for him in court, it just, the dude makes me sick. I come across plenty of assholes in my research, but his apathy, his lack of any humanity, Rainier is probably one of those people you'll hear me call a straight up monster. But don't take my word for it because it comes from the mouths of his own victims. The first to speak was a woman identified only as Camila, who in a trembling voice recalled that Mr. Rainier started sexually abusing her when she was 15 and he was 45. She had previously declined to cooperate with prosecutors on the advice of a lawyer who was recommended to her by Mr. Rainier's counsel. During their 12 year relationship, Camila said Mr. Rainier expected her to be available for sex at all hours. He ordered her to weigh less than 100 pounds and directed her to get an abortion. She said she even attempted suicide once. I want to move on, but he has damaged me in so many ways, Camila said. When he wanted to replace Camila, prosecutor said, he directed his inner circle to find another young virgin successor for him. Another victim, India Oxenberg, told the court that Mr. Rainier tried to poison her relationship with her mother, the actress Catherine Oxenberg, whose efforts to extricate her daughter from the organization were part of a recent HBO documentary series about Nexium called The Vow. India Oxenberg said Mr. Rainier expected her to wait naked for him like a piece of meat. She became so thin under his manipulation that she stopped getting her period, she said. You are a sexual predator and you raped me, India Oxenberg said. When you touched me, I recoiled. Needless to say, Rainier deserves whatever the hell he gets. And honestly, so did the leaders that worked alongside him. 
Now, although Rainier is so obviously a terrible person, there are still loyalists out there, and I'm not kidding. Keith Rainier had fucking loyalists dancing outside his jail back in July, which just, ugh. According to the Times Union, outside Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center, a group of people dance every night to support federal inmates, including one in particular, Kay Rose. There is, however, no inmate by that name in the Brooklyn facility or anywhere else in the federal prison population for that matter. But Kay Rose shares the initials of someone who has spent the past two years in the downstate lockup, Keith Rainier, the leader of the formerly influential and now shattered organization known as Nexium. Former Nexium members say what has been billed by a group called We Are As You Are as a campaign to buck up prisoners as they live under peril of COVID-19 infections is being organized by a group of the remaining loyal disciples of Renair, a 59-year-old convicted sex trafficker from Half Moon known for his cult-like personal growth group as Vanguard. We Are As You has met outside the detention center every night at 8 p.m. since July 3rd. Its members who post about their activities on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, blast music, dance, and even do backflips. While the former Nexium members acknowledge it's impossible to know how many of the participants are familiar with Rainier, they say the organizers of the street rallies have a single audience member in mind. It's a cover movement for Keith Rainier. It's a Trojan horse, said Mark Vicente, a filmmaker and former high-ranking Nexium member who was a key witness against Rainier during his trial last year. You might remember his name from my past video. He was the man that declared war on Rainier and backed up Sarah, a former member's story so that news outlets could pick it up. Why are all the key figures Rainier loyalists? This is all a tribute to Rainier. And it does take a lot to surprise me, it really does. But I was genuinely surprised to learn that there are people who still, to this fucking day, support this man. I want to believe that they're still under Rainier's control somehow or something. Like, I don't want to think that anyone could willingly do this, but there is just no excuse for this behavior or for anyone who supports him. Not to mention, Mark Vicente warned that hashtags for we are as you also mentioned the Black Lives Matter movement in their posts. Imagine what Black Lives Matter would think if they found out this was a cover for a white convicted pedophile sex slaver. It's highly offensive, Vicente said. And yeah, no fucking kidding. I just like, he's been convicted at this point. Rainier is inarguably, undeniably a despicable person. Like, I just don't understand why someone would, like, I'm so disappointed in all of y'all out there that wanna support this man still. Like, how could you? But somehow, and even more disturbingly, just this past September, an article on Frank Report read that Nexium is still alive and just as dangerous as ever. Here's what it said. Keith Rainier may have actually lost his mind, or once the Honorable Nicholas G. Garfawis, the US District Court judge who will be sentencing him on October 27th to think he has. That's really all anyone can conclude from the latest strategy that he has deployed in his effort to prove that he should have never been prosecuted, let alone convicted, for some of the crimes he committed as the head of Nexium ESP criminal enterprise. In a letter that was sent on Saturday, September 26th, Seth Ducharme, the acting US attorney for the Eastern District of New York, has informed Judge Garfawis of the following events that took place on Friday. Just before 5 p.m., Sunil Chakavardi sent an email to Ducharme, former EDNY US attorney Richard Donahue and assistant US attorneys Mark Lesko and Tanya Hajar. Around the same time, approximately 10 people, any of who had a video camera, showed up at the office of the US attorney for the EDNY and left a paper copy of the attachments to the email. Also around the same time, another individual attempted to leave a package of materials at the law firm where former US attorney Moira Penza works. Sunil is a passionate follower of Rainier and one of the leaders of the Forgotten Ones, a group that has been having dancers perform every Friday night outside the Metropolitan Detention Center, which is where Keith has been incarcerated since March, 2018. This article continues stating that Sunil sent a petition and an affidavit in the prosecution of this case. It seems like a weak, pitiful attempt at setting Rainier free, one that should be laughed off. But what makes it rage-inducing and horrifying is that it wasn't Sunil who sent these demands for Rainier to be freed, but supposedly it was Rainier himself who emailed the affidavit points to Sunil on June 9th. 
This is incredibly fucking worrying to think that Rainier can still influence his followers from prison. And I honestly feel like I'm going to be sick. Going into this, I thought I would simply share the great news that Rainier is going to rot in prison and then end today's video. But the more I looked into recent events around Nexium, the worse and worse it got. On September 25th, at the time this letter was sent out, almost a dozen followers descended on the attorney's office to even deliver their demands in person. And one apparently attempted to deliver a package to the former Rainier prosecutor at her law firm. I want to note that I didn't find many sources that stated this, so this could be exaggerated or even untrue, but considering that most articles and news sources about Nexium right now are about the conviction, this could have slipped past some people too. If it is true though, it is extremely worrying and I don't even want to speculate what was in that package. The point of all this, the dancing, the affidavit, all of it, is that Nexium is unfortunately still alive and kicking somehow, somewhere. And clearly, judging by the emails, Rainier is, at least to some extent, still running things. As of October 27th, Allison Mack is still awaiting sentencing. Rainier got 120 years and Claire has less than seven years. This story even now is not over. I truly hope it someday will be, especially for the victims, so they can put this behind them and begin the healing process. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you liked it, I guess, I don't know. If you learned something, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want even more content from me, including all the sources I used to create today's video, pop open that description box. You'll find links to all of my social media, second channels I'm involved with, and any of my upcoming projects. So thank you again for making it to another video. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.